Hello, today I will show you how to use the gpswalks.com platform. On the main screen, top right side of the screen, you need to click sign in. And on the next page, you need to type in your credentials and also click sign in. After you log into the system, you will be taken to the main screen of the platform. In this page, you will have access to the main features of the software. Also, you can view the devices and their device information like coordinates, history, speed and so on. On the top right side of the screen you have the tools menu. On the left screen you have the object navigation and control panel. On the right side you will have the map features that you can turn off or on. To add a new device, you need to click the plus button on the left side. Here you can type in the name of the device. And the device IMA number of the device itself. Also you can type in the tracker ID which is used for mobile apps. In this case, you will need to set up the ID itself and input it into the mobile device and into the software itself so the device can be recognized in the software. If you're using any other device on the back side of it you will see the IMA number. Also you will need to configure that device to make sure that it's sending data to our server. A sample on how to configure the tracker you can view on our main page going to our support the trackers and then typing in the model of your device for example Diltonic. Going on the tracker you will see information on how to set up your device. Going back to adding the device in the platform Type in the IMA device and just click save. Your object will appear on the left side and in the map itself. As soon as it receives data in the server, you will see it on the map and the left side of the screen. By default, it's going to be added on the ungrouped list. If you want the device to appear on specific list, the first thing you will need to do is to create the list. You need to select setup and then go into object groups. On the bottom type on type in on the field any device group that you require, my group for example. Clicking save will make the list come up on the left side. Once that is done, you will need to add the group to the device. Click on the three dots and click edit. Then you will need to go into advanced and select the group that you have created to be assigned to the object. Once that is done, on the left side it will create the group and show the devices assigned to the group as you can see, each device has a color next to it. The same color is displayed on the map. It can be green, red or yellow. Now I will show you on what the meaning is and how to change it. Click on edit next to any object. Going into icons. And next to the icon type, it's going to be arrow by default, meaning your device will be displayed as an arrow. You can change it to rotating icon or simply icon. By default, this will be set up as arrow. Moving on, you're going to see the states that the tracker can be in and which color is displayed by which state. For example, moving is going to show green stopped and sending some data to our server is going to show yellow. 
offline and not connected to the system or not sending data at all is going to show red. Engine idle with the engine on is going to show yellow as well. You can change these colors whenever you'll require. Clicking save will save that on the device. After anything is changed on the server, you must click save for these to be displayed. Now I will show you additional things that you can set on a tracker. Moving on to advanced, you can select the group as shown below. Add an additional number like SIM number, license plate, VIN number, device model, so on. Also on the bottom, you will be able to change the average consumption of fuel and the fuel cost. In this case, once creating a report, you're going to see how much fuel the car is consuming based on the distance it travels and also the cost of that travel. Time adjustment is always recommended to be set to default. It is only used in a case where the GPS tracker is sending incorrect information to our server. If that is the case, the time can be adjusted in the system, but by default it must be set to default and the tracker must be con configured to UTC0. For example, you wish to send a command to GPS tracker. To do that, you need to click on tools on the top and send command. Select the device and which command you want to send to the device. For example, this device is only assigned to show GPRS commands, meaning it will only show the commands that you have set up yourself. To do so, you will need to click on Setup, GPRS Templates, Add New, name the command to whichever you like, select the port or the model of the GPS device and type in the command into the message field and click save. You can also select the, the command by selecting the three dots next to the device. For example here, it's going to act the same as sending commands from the setup field, but you will not have to choose from the devices. Talking about commands, you not only can send GPRS commands, you can also send an SMS command. On the advanced tab, you must type in your SIM number. Also, you must have an SMS gateway set up. To set this up, you need to click on Setup, go into SMS Gateway, and make sure it's enabled. This is where you can select the SMS Gateway that you want to use. You can use third-party gateways, for example, anyone that provides the service. Select the method. Here is going to show a uh, sample on how this can be set up. However, the most simple way is to use the SMS Gateway app that you can get from the App Store. Go into our page, click on Apps, SMS Gateway, and download the mobile application here. Once that is done, you must type in the IP and login credentials into the mobile app, and it will automatically connect. After that is done, all the SMS commands will go through the mobile application. Now, sensors. Before you create the sensor, I highly recommend you to go to the GPS box application and under sensor management, you will have a good explanation on how the sensors work. Each GPS device sends data to our GPS server with the data, it is also sending the parameters. 
these parameters can then be viewed in history data log. For example, select any device, show history today. Now it is showing the history on the right side, you can see data log. On this data log you will see the parameters that the device is sending to us. Also with the data you can see the parameters and the values that are sent. These parameters will be used to set up specific sensors, events and alerts. The document documentation is explained and also there's a good information piece on how to set this up on a web page. Let's try and add one now. Click Add Sensor, select the parameter that name. Here we're going to see all the sensors that the device is sending to the server. Because this one doesn't have a lot, it only shows a few. Let's select the engine hours. This parameter will be paired to the sensors on the server. For example, selecting only a specific value that is sent to the tracker, we must select the template. Textual is the most simple one. It's going to show as engine hours and the sensor name is going to be engine hours. Click save. This is where the sensor is going to come up and also on the bottom of the screen under sensors. For example, let's select a tracker that sends us more data. For example, this one is going to show more of them. We click on edit and go to sensors. This is why you can see more of the sensors already set up and we can use them as an example. So the sensor name is ignition, the template is ACC on or off, parameter name is an ignition, as you can see it has a lot more of them on the list, the on value is zero, the off value is one. Let's check the battery sensor. We click on the battery. Also, it could be sending a different data and can be named anything else. This can be set up to whichever you like. The measuring tool is set as percent. Show value by. For example, there is a situation that a tracker is not sending the battery value to the server by percent. For example, it's like 50%, but it is sending a value that is showing from 0 to 5. In this case, we will need to select the minimum and maximum values. The minimum value is 0 and the maximum is 5. Of course, this can be different. This could be larger or smaller, so we need to check beforehand. If the value is sending 5, that means the battery is at 100%. If it is sending 0, it means the battery is dead. 2 and 3, for example, is going to be calculated accordingly, like 50% or so on. Now we can check one more sensor odometer. It is one of the most popular sensors used in our system. Of course, we have to select the odometer template and unit of measurement. It could be kilometers or miles, depends on which you require. Also, we can select this on the bottom right of the window. The only difference is that the data type in here is going to show next to the device on the bottom of sensors. For example, it says mileage here. So if we set up MI here, it's going to show mileage next to the numbers.
we have two types of odometers. It can either be virtual or connected. The virtual odometer works this way. You type in the data and then it adds the distance traveled by the device, which is relatively accurate and you don't need to configure anything else. Although we do have some situations while the tracker can have the CAN adapter which sends the data to our server on the exact value of the odometer. In this case, we need to type in connected odometer. Of course, parameter name will be different. It's going to be odometer. And then type in the value that has a formula. This is to be used only in the example if it is sending the data to meters and you want to see kilometers then you will need to apply the formula to show you the correct average. So this is a basic information on census. More examples can be found on our web page and the manual. Moving on to the services tab. This tab is to, for you to allow checking of the, for example, the insurance of the car, when the maintenance has to be done, all needs to be changed and so on. You click Add Service, then select the expiration by, explaining you can select days, years or weeks. Interval will be how much time, and then trigger the event when it's left seven days and so on. Type in your email, and once the time is for example, left seven days next to the event, it's going to send you an email or an SMS command. Accuracy tab. By default, this is where it is best not to change anything. Although in some cases you can correct the data sent to our server. For example, fuel fillings, moving speed, uh, the ignition detection bar is one of the most. For example, if you have a sensor that is showing the ignition status of the device, it is best to have the sensor set up here. You have to select the sensor AC on or off, meaning once the engine is off, the movement is not going to be tracked. For example, you parked your car and the device is sending you incorrect coordinates every 30 seconds. In that case, you can see the bouncing of the trajectory in the history tab. Also, it can trigger various geofence alerts. So the best case to go about it is to enable this de ignition detection by AC on off. Last thing is the tail. As you can see on the map, you can see the tail of where the device has been. It's going to be the last five or 10 points of the tail. So you can estimate on where the object has been and where it's traveling. You can select the tail length to, from zero to 10 and the tail color. For example, you can have them set up by the vehicle's color. It will be easier to follow on the map. If you click the device, you're gonna see the address you will see the main sensors attached, Google Street View, if that's available. As you can see, on the bottom, it is going to show the same information as the one when clicking the device. Clicking the eye, you will see the Google Street View, if that's available. This is the information called widgets. You can select them on clicking widgets here. And you can disable them or switch them by position. To check the vehicle's history, you need to click dots and show history. The default is by last hour, today or yesterday. You can also go to the history tab and select the device name and select the dates. Clicking this button will export 
the data to specific formats. If you click advanced, you can select to show when the stops need to be shown. If it's three minutes, four minutes and so on. If you click snap to rows and then show history, it will show better trajectory of the vehicle tracker but it might occur displaying correctly so it is recommended not to have it clicked on the events tab you can type you can see the events that already happened on the device for example clicking on the three dots you can see why this event occurred clicking on alert you can edit the event we will take a closer look at the map control options. On the right side, you will see the panel on which you will control your map. If you click the first button, it will go into full screen mode and you will not see anything other than the map and your objects. If you click this button, you will see the maps available for your choice. We have Google Hybrid, Google Satellite, Terrain, OpenStreetMaps, and Google Normal. Plus and minus will allow you to zoom in and both zoom out. This will allow you to view object grouping. So if you see a lot of objects in one place, it will uh, sum them up in this manner. So you can turn on or off this function here. Zooming in will also do the same thing. It will divide things. Fit objects will allow you to view all of your objects in one screen. So if you want to see one object, you will zoom in. And if you click fit objects, it will zoom out to the view that it will allow you to watch all of your objects at the same time. Objects will allow you to either see or not see all of your objects. This is useful if you have a lot of geofences and you don't want your objects interrupting them, so you can just disable them. Same thing goes for geofences. If you click or unclick them, it will show or hide them. Same goes with routes, points of interest, with the names of the GPS objects, and also tails. If we zoom into the object to be able to see the tail of the object, you can either see it or hide it. And the same goes for traffic. You can click this option and you will see live traffic showing the congestions, the traffic and so on. To follow a device, you will need to click the dotted line next to the object and click follow. This will open a new window where you can view the object in real time. You can move the screen to any part of the platform you require. Also, you can view as many devices as you like at the same time. There you can see them side by side and we can also open another one to see three objects in real time at the same time on your platform. Right here on the top of the screen you can click the chat button. It is used to communicate with the GPS Walks mobile application. The application can be downloaded from the main page of GPS Walks by clicking on apps mobile phone tracker and then downloading the application on your mobile device. Also, you can find the video that shows you how to configure your device. And this is where it shows the chat button. By clicking here, it will open the window of the chat you can also click the dotted line next to the object and open the chat through here. This is how chatting would look like on your mobile device. You can type in the message here and the person on the device would receive the message. 
Now we're going to discuss the setup window that you can find on the top right side of the screen. If you click it once, it will open the setup view. Here you will be able to set up the unit of distance by kilometers or miles. Unit of capacity and available will be liter and gallon. meter or feet for altitude and default start of the week. Also the time zone and daylight saving time. It is recommended to keep this on automatic. If you don't, you would need to select the country to make sure that it corrects the time in the system. Going into object groups, here you can assign objects to these groups that will be seen on the left side. On the drivers, you will be able to add specific drivers. If you click add driver, type in the name of the driver, then RFID number, phone, email, etc. and assign which device belongs to this driver. Clicking save will enable the driver on the device. Events we're going to cover in the last part of this video. SMS gateway as described in the previous video. It is a way to send SMS commands or messages. SMS templates, GPRS templates uh, are used to create commands. And widgets is something that you're going to see on the bottom right side of the screen. If you click uh, service is saved, you're not going to see the widget on the bottom, otherwise it's going to show up. Going back to setup and events. Before creating events, it is recommended to go to our website, go into manual and setup. Then you would need to go up to events and read through the parameters here because this has a very detailed explanation on how to set them up and how to capture the events. This also includes various samples to make it easier. So a GPS server is going to send us specific data to the server. We can view this data in the data log And based on those parameters, we can create sensors by using the data received. And using those sensors, we can create events. If an event is created, we can then go and create alerts for those specific events. So we click Add Event. Select the device based on name, we can select it based on port number, device, or brand. For example, Teltonica. Imagine it is sending a specific parameter, for example, DI1, which is going to mean battery or whichever. So we're going to type in battery, which is going to mean that the battery has run out. For example, the device senses data stating the device is running out of battery and the values are going to be from 5 to a specific number. So meaning that 0 to 5 will mean that the battery is going low. We can set it less than, greater than or equals to. And if it's less than, for example, 3, it's going to be 1.5 or 2. This is going to mean that the battery is low. Type in low battery in the message and click save. Click save here as well. And now we have an event. Whenever the battery is low, the system is going to trigger the event. We're going to need to set up an alert for that event. So we go to tools, alerts create 
go into the specific type, which is going to be custom. Now the reason this is empty, when creating a new device, you need to select the devices on which the device, uh, the alert is going to go to. So we need to click on the list to make sure that the devices are assigned to the specific alerts. For example, let's select the device. For example, this one, and then we go into low battery. So once the tracker sends us the data and it triggers the event, event is going to be created and it's, the system is going to check whether there's an alert set up for this specific event. Because it is, you can set it up to be a sound alarm, a message, any type of notification, and it's going to send it. So we're going back to set up events, add a new event. We're going to go back to Teltonica and create a new event. We're going to set up an event showing that the car is being towed in case of car theft or etc. So the first parameter is that the engine of the car is turned off. The parameter name for the engine is D1, uh, uh, DI1 and it has to be zero. When it is set to zero, it's going to show that the engine is off. However, this function is not enough to set up the alert. So we're going to have to set up another one. Next thing is going to show there's movement detected. The parameter is called motion and it's going to equal to true. Once these two conditions are correct, the engine is off and the motion is true, it's going to give us an alert of tow alert. Someone's towing the car with the engine off. Going back to alerts and add new. Tools, alerts, add new, or maybe edit, selecting any device, going into type, custom event, and now it's going to allow us to select both. Now we're going to go into tools. You can find them on the top right side of the screen by clicking tools, and then going all of your tools. Let's begin with alerts. On the left side, you're going to see available alerts that are already created. You can edit or delete them. To create the new one, you will need to click the plus on the top of the screen. Now you will have to type in the name of the alert that you wish to create. Alert name, for example. Then you're going to have to select devices that will have this specific alert. For example, we can select all of the devices and then go into type. These are some of the alerts that are already pre-made to create the alerts. First one is over speed. This is to show the speed being higher than the one described on the field below. For example, 25 kilometers per hour, and the vehicle is traveling on a higher speed than this one, it's going to create an alert and going into stop duration. For example, the vehicle is parked for more than specified time, for example, 15 minutes, it's going to create an alert again. Next one is driver change. This is where an alert is going to be triggered if the driver has changed. For example, if you have a vehicle 
and you have more than one driver assigned to the vehicle, a list is going to be seen here. As soon as the driver changes, an alert will be created. Geofence in. Triggered in the case where the object enters a geofence or several geofences. You can select which geofences those are. You can select all of them or neither of them. At least one of them is required to trigger this alert. Same for geofence out. When the vehicle leaves a specified zone or specified zones, an alert is going to be triggered. Geofence in or out, an alert is going to be triggered when the device either enters or leaves a specified zone. Custom events, as spoken before, if you create an alert that is not already in the system, for example, a battery alert or a tow alert, or on the top right side setup, these events will be visible here and here you can select them. Going into the geofencing tab, as you may have already noticed, selecting a specific geofence in or out, the geofence tab is disabled. If you want the geofence to work with a specific alert of geofencing, then you will need to create a custom event and then only go into geofencing, selecting zone in or zone out. You can select one of them or both of them. Schedule. This is a window that we can specify which times the tracker needs to be active. For example, a specific event must only work from 7 in the morning to 8 in the evening. We can select that here. Click on schedule. Click on the day that of the week that you want to be active and then specify when the time is. We can select the whole day if we want the device to be sensitive to specific alerts. Also, we have the option to select always, weekend and so on. Going into notifications. This will show how the alert is triggered once it is activated. By default, it's going to be sound notification in the system, meaning whenever an event occurs that has an alert set up, on the top right side of the screen, you're going to see a pop-up window and the notification will come up. This is very useful when you have a a few tabs open in the browser and you just cannot keep up with all of them you're going to hear an event and once you hear the event you can click the window it's gonna come up with the alert push notifications are set up to be pushed out to mobile client applications meaning if you have a mobile client app and you are logged into it the application will trigger an alert on the mobile device to show you the alert. Another one is email notification. Type in your email and it's going to send you an email once the device creates the alert. Also SMS notification, type in your number and you will receive an SMS command once this is done. Or webhook, meaning it's going to send a command to a specific URL address stating that this has happened. Now going into command, when the alert is triggered, you can have a system send a command to a specific device. For example, let's say a vehicle leaves a specific zone. As soon as that happens, you can create a command that is going to send the alert and the command to the tracker to disable the engine or you have an event where a door has been opened for example you can select an alert and once this is set up all you have to do is select save 
If you require more information and one more examples on how to set this up, you would need to go into our web page and on the manual you just need to go under alerts. This is going to have various samples and information on how to set them up and how to configure them. This is going to be very useful in setting up alerts and events. Now we're going to view over the remaining tools. For example, tools and geofencing. On the left side, you will see the all of the available geofences already in the system. We can edit them, delete them, or also add a new one. We can export or import them. By clicking the plus button, we can create a new one. For example, if we have a couple hundred of geofences, it would be easier for us to export them and import them on another account. To add a new one, we click on plus and just draw any polygon required on the map. Assign a name to the polygon. And then select a group to which it's going to be added. Because it's not added, we can create specific groups to be on the list. Background color, it's going to show the color that we can change to whichever we like. Once created, we click save. It's going to be saved on the geofences. It's going to come up on this list on the left side. If you don't see it, make sure the geofences is selected on the right side. We can select routes created on here. We click on the plus, draw our route, type in the name and click save. It's going to come up on the map. Tools reports. This is the report generator tool. On the top, we will need to name the report. For example, field report. Then we type in the, the type that is going to be like. It can be a standard one or something more difficult, for example, geofence in and out. To check each of the report, it would be best to go into the manual, go into reports, and report samples. This is where you will see the information. Here we can see what the report is going to look like and what information is going to be displayed. We can download both the samples and once we view it, it is a lot easier for us to select what we want to see in our report because we know what it's going to look like. So all the report types are going to be displayed here. We select the required type and the format. It can be HTML, XLS, PDF, whatever. We select the dates which have to be included in the report. Which devices will be affected by this. We can select all or select nothing at all. Also, if any geofences are created, we can make sure that they're included. Send to email is going to send it to our email that we type in. Also, we can set the report to be sent daily or weekly. We can type in the, the hour at which it's sent or a weekly which hour it's sent. Once created, generate. It will generate the report and send as required. It's going to be downloaded directly to your computer if generate is clicked. If we want it to be sent every day or every week, all we have to do is click save to make sure it's sent at the required time and not generated right now. If you click new, it's going to delete everything 
that is already set up and we can set up a new report. On the top creating generate reports is going to show all the reports that have been already generated. We can edit or delete them and then schedule reports. It's going to show everything that was already generated periodically and sent to us. For example, if you didn't get an email with a specific report, you can download this report here, or you can see if this was generated or not, or if there was a problem or something. Moving on, tools and ruler. This is only going to show ruler that is going to show distance from one point to another. For example, we can see what the distance is between these two points. Moving on to tools, point of interest. Create a plus sign, we can create a new one. And on the map, we can set up specific points of interest. For example, we type in a specific name, description, select the icon from the available list and click save. And now we can use a pointer that we can mark on the map. If we select on the right side POI, it's going to show up on the map. Show point. We can type in specific coordinates and it is going only going to show us the location on the map. The same for address. If we click tools and show address, we can type in the address, click show, and we will see that specific location on the map. Going into tools and send command. This is where you can send commands to your device. Tools, camera, media. If your device has assigned a camera next to it, this is where you will be able to capture the images. All of the devices with such availability will be displayed here. You will just need to set up your device and you will see a list of the images generated. If you want to create a photo at the current time, you can just click a command to be sent to take the photo or you can click the device here. This button will only be highlighted if the tracker can support this function. Going into tools and tasks. This is where it's going to have a window of tasks. This works in conjunction with the mobile tracker app. If we go into our web page and your application will be available to be downloaded here. It will have an explanation on how to use the tasks right here. If you type in a task, save the task, the person using the mobile application will then be available to execute the command. So basically you select the device, set up a specific task, and the person with the mobile application will be able to perform the task assigned here. You can see a list of all the tasks, the tasks have been completed or not, they will come up on this list.